Hello everybody, my name is Maximilian coming up for the next video for you. Welcome to Saturnux channel. This time in this video we are testing four Apple devices. The M1 MacBook Air from 2020, the M2 MacBook Air, the M3 Mac Pro and M4 Mac Mini. The M1 and M2 Macs are the base models with 256GB of storage and 8GB of RAM. On the other hand, the M3 Pro has 18 gigabytes of RAM and 215 gigabytes of storage. And then we also have the M4 with, with the base 256 gigabytes of storage and also the 24 gigabytes of RAM. So yeah, here we are testing first the disk speeds. So as you can see, the M1 MacBook Air does have some nice disk speeds. The write speed is 2000 over 2000 megabytes per second, so that's just nice. And uh, the read speeds are almost 3000 to 2922. So very, very good disk speeds when it comes to the M1 MacBook Air. You can really just edit the videos on it. The 8K videos do read just fine. 12k even so yeah this is just great now we are also testing the m2 mac with the 256 gigabytes of storage and this one is just not the same level as the m1 i don't know why apple did this but they just did significantly reduce the speeds on this m2 macbook and as you can see now we're looking like 500 megabytes per second even less than 500 so it's not the greatest and here the read speeds are a little bit below 1000 so yeah it has some troubles with just keeping up with the 4k images and 8k videos as you can see it has some problems not great apple not great i wonder if they did the same thing with the m3 macbook air and now we're also testing the glorious beautiful m3 pro with the 512 gigabytes of storage so as you can see when it comes to this this one has 3600, almost 4000 megabytes per second. The speeds are just phenomenal and the read speed are 5200 megabytes per second. So yeah, this is just great. It has no trouble just reading the 12K videos, 8K videos to read fine just as well. So yeah, no problems when it comes to just reading the files, the big files are just great. And unfortunately, we cannot test the disk speeds on the M4 Mini. We don't have the software to do this, so we're skipping on this test. And this is how the whole results stack up against each other. The M3 Pro is just the best here, then comes the M1 and then comes the M2. Now what we are doing here is we are, we are doing the Blender Render project. We are rendering this thing and the cycles with the gpu and yeah we are comparing the times so the render times let's compare them all um here we go as you can see the m3 pro is just doing it great it has the great gpu so it has no problems whatsoever when it comes to just rendering files like this in blender the 3d projects they look they do render just fine and then comes the m4 mini not so far behind very very nice very very good speeds i have no problems with it whatsoever and yeah the errors do take some time the render speeds are not the same the render speeds are worse the gpu are just falling behind quite a bit when it comes to the m3 pro and m4 yeah in comparison they're just worse and the M2 does have a slight lead against the M1 from 2020, but they're not significantly different between each other. They're pretty close to each other actually. And this is how the results stack up against each other. You can really see that the M3 Pro is just really shining here. A great machine for rendering if you're doing a lot of rendering projects, the 3D projects in Blender, go for it. And now again, here we are doing the benchmark, the Blender benchmark. Mm, it has some projects to render. We have the monster project. We have some other projects to render as well. And yeah, well, as you can see, they're pretty neck to neck. Even the Airs are just keeping up with this first project. But then the M3 Pro just started the next project. Project the first one, and then comes the M4 Mini. So yeah, as you can see, and the Airs are just not so far behind. Yeah. The M4 and the M3 Pro do have the lead, quite a bit of the lead, as you can see. So just like expected, the M3 Pro does finish the benchmark the first, then comes the M4 Mini, and we're still waiting for the Airs to finish their projects. Then comes the M2 Air, and then also the M1. 
And now what we are doing here is we are rendering this seven minutes and nine seconds video long file in Premiere Pro 2025. As you can see for the first time when we load up the project, this one takes, so it shows us seven minutes on the M1 MacBook Air, but then the estimated remaining time does regulate itself and it shows us now six minutes, five minutes. And yeah, it's just really, really nice, honestly. When it comes to editing videos, like full HD videos like this, you have no problem with that. You can do the same thing on the M1 MacBook Air even that from 2020. But yeah, if you are just doing a lot of, I don't know, like After Effects projects, like some complex projects, like 4K images, files and stuff, go for the Pro model, you won't regret it. And get yourself some extra RAM because Adobe projects, they do consume a lot of RAM. So yeah, get yourself some nice RAM upgrade. And just like this, the M1 Mac finished the project rendering this. Here we are now just comparing it to the M2 MacBook Air. An M2 MacBook Air shows us six minutes, now five minutes of time remaining. So yeah, it's just, you know, regulating itself. And at the end, we'll see how many minutes it takes. So here we are just getting to the finish line and the M2 Mac finished the project. Let's now compare it to the M3 Pro and the M4. So here we go with the M3 Pro MacBook Pro. And this is the exact time where the M3 Pro just really do shine. We can see how well that is. It's just rendering the project very, very fast. No problems with it whatsoever. Yeah, if you are doing a lot of renders and particularly the more intensive ones like the After Effects or some 8K projects, get yourself the M3 Pro or I don't know, M2 Max, let's say. These processors are also very nice, especially that now they are just cheaper. You can get the M2 Max MacBook for a very, very attractive price on eBay. So yeah, look on eBay. Now let's just compare the machines with the M4 Mini, the newest silicon from Apple. Let's see how it all stacks up against each other. As you can see, it has no problems when it comes to rendering such a file. It does the thing quite nicely, quite fast. Here it is, the M4 Mac Mini doing the project. So yeah, compare the scores, get yourself some nice coffee and take a look at this. You can pause the video, you can see how it all looks like, compare the machines between each other. As you can see, the M1 MacBook Air, which is literally very, very cheap right now, does not fall behind the M2 that much. And yeah, the M3 Pro is just the king here. Now, what we are doing here is we all we are doing the multi-core benchmark and the Cinebench. So we are running such files. And as you can see, the M4 and M3 Pro are just shining here once again, getting rendered the four tiles right now where the errors only have two. So yeah, the M4 and M3 Pro do have quite a lead when it comes to rendering such projects. You can see that the M1 and M2 are just pretty much neck to neck. There's no such a difference. All right, the M2 is just a little bit faster, but not by much. So yeah, this is how the scores look like. Obviously, as expected, the M4 is the best and the M3 Pro comes on the second place. That's because the CPU on the M4 is just a little bit faster than on the M3 Pro. M3 Pro does have a little bit better the GPU, like the Blender benchmark or the Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere do render files better on the M3 Pro compared to the M4. Now here's me just checking the temperatures of the Max. So to be honest, the M1 did quite nicely when it comes to the cooling. Mm, it does not have a fan and M2 does not have a fan as well, but they were not as hot as I thought they would be. The temperatures are quite nicely, especially for the passive cooling. Really, really nice when it comes to this cooling. Of course, the results are not the same. If they had fans, they might actually perform better. They might have actually much better scores. But yeah, the scores are not bad either. So for fanless device, I'm quite impressed, honestly. An M3 MacBook Air and M4 fans are hearable, but they're very, 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 very quiet. It's almost impossible to hear them. So yeah, if you are just wondering if they do have a lot of noise because of the fans, they don't really. They're very, very quiet. So it's super, super nice. And here it is, the multi-score, as you can see, 969 points on the M4 Mac mini 438 on the macbook air very very nicely and when it comes to the pro model here we've got 921 points so yeah that's how the points stack up against each other you can see on the chart as well 
So guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My MacBook Air did quite nicely. I'm very, very proud of this one. Yeah, I bought this thing back in like 2021. And yeah, I'm editing every single video on this Mac and it's just great. The verdict is if you are just doing a lot of work in After Effects or, for, or some 4K projects, get yourself the Pro model with extra RAM. But if you are just doing some light videos like I do, get yourself the M1 MacBook Air and you're fine with it. You're if you are doing some vlogs in full resolution, HD, 4K, you can do this thing on M M1, M2, R. No problem whatsoever about that. Thanks again and see you in the next one. Bye!